Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Positive Business, and I'm Patricia Raskin. We are in our fourth year here at AM790, which is the Talk and Business Station. And today in our first segment, we're talking about how do you overcome obstacles and really get through them from someone who had tremendous obstacles. Our guest is Michael Alden. He is a business and lifestyle expert, and he's the author of the best-selling book, Ask More, Get More. Michael endured a horribly traumatic life growing up, but summoned the courage to battle back against adversity. Determined never to give up, he honed his skills for living and in the process found success far beyond his wildest dreams. In 2009, Michael founded Blue Vase Marketing, an infomercial consulting firm with clients around the world. And today, he's one of this industry's most noted behind-the-scenes professionals and has played an instrumental role in infomercials becoming a pop culture phenomenon. Welcome, Michael Alden. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Trisha. Thank you mm-hmm. so much for having me. It's uh, really a pleasure. I'm sorry, I was just eating some dry oatmeal before for a little that's, bit of a late lunch, but thanks again for having me. That's all right. You know, something that I always wonder is... What is it when you've come from a lot of adversity, and and I know that you have. In fact, I want to read this. This was in the praise for your book from John Abdo, who's an Olympic strength conditioning coach and uh, in the Olympic Games, and he's also in the National Fitness Hall of Fame. He was an an inductee. Here's what he says. Michael Alden recounts his poverty-laden upbringing, his struggling single mother, jostled for food stamps, and begged to keep her son and herself from eviction. Alden's story motivates and educates. Whether you're rich or poor, content or striving, this book has golden nuggets of information, and it's a must-read. So you had quite a an incredible background. I guess the question is, when did that light bulb go off that said, no, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different? You know, that, that's a great question. You know, when I was a kid, I, I, I was just trying, I think I was trying to be as bad as I can, you know, just, I, I, I was just, uh, there were a lot of other kids around me and I, and I was looking at, looking to them and I was just again trying to be as bad as can. But one of the things that I realized though is when I started to actually, uh, um, meet other people and see other people from outside of my neighborhood and started to look up to some other people, I realized that, you know, I said, whoa, 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 let's, let me just stop the clock here. Let me see what my life looks like right now. And let me look forward. And when I looked forward, Patricia, it didn't look good. Mm. And, you know, uh, I, I'm not really sure what, 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 what caused me to, to actually want to, you know, look forward. But, you know, the clock stopped, and then I just kind of looked forward, and I said, you know what, I don't want to be, you know, the person, you know, I am today. So I started to make some positive changes in my life uh, and, and, again, look, to, you know, look towards the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of people always ask me, you know, I have, uh, you know, family members and friends that have, you know, been involved in crime and been, incar- excuse me, been incarcerated and, been involved in all sorts of you know horrible things, and they say, Mike, you know, you know, what makes you so different? You know, why? You know, why yeah. have you been so, so successful? Yeah. And the answer is really, uh, really simple. I'm no different than anybody else. If you look at the DNA of myself, and if you look at the DNA uh, of any one of my, uh, you know, these kids I grew up with or family members, we're we're no different. I say to people, there's no such thing as a success gene, right? And there's no mm-hmm. such thing as a failure gene. Mm-hmm. But at some point, you have to really just want it yourself. And I really think, yeah. you know, that's what it was. I just said, hey, now, I need to, you know, do something with my life. And then I started to take advantage of some of the opportunities that were given to me. So what, when you say, you know, you, you decided that you're going to do something different, what were some of those initial changes that you made? Well, one of the first things is, is, you know, and I talk about this in the book, is I started to cleanse my social circle, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people have, have a tough time doing that. And what I basically did was, is, you know, I, I stopped hanging around with the bad kids. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the first thing you need to do. And I stopped hanging around with family members that were also uh, negative. I talk about this in my book. I talk about the term excuse tosis, right? And I say it's a disease that is infecting us, uh, mm-hmm. you know, day after day after day. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of it comes from our own, you know, our own, uh, you know, familial circle, like your yeah. mother, our father, or even our, our other siblings, and they actually kind of bring you down. Now, uh, how do you do that? How do you, someone just asked me, so how do I stop talking to my mother, who's, yeah. a, you know, one of the most negative people I've ever met? How do I stop talking to my father? Who's a, you just do. You just have to do it. In order, to be, in order to really be successful, sometimes you need to, you know, step outside of that social circle you're in and start a new one. Well, and that's really what I did when I was a yeah, kid. I started uh, new social circles. Yeah, or maybe talk to your mother or your father in a different way. 
So you don't yeah. let them in as much, in other words. Because if yeah, you let you them in let too them much, know, then they'll drag you, know, you down. You don't have to let them know that they're no longer, you know, you know, exactly. going to bring you down. But that happens, and it's too bad. But you know, that's really what happens in this world, and and unfortunately. But I say to people, that's what you really need to do. You need to, you know, uh, cleanse your social circle, and that's exactly what I did when I was a kid. Yeah, and so let me ask you then, in terms of being a successful entrepreneur. What advice would you then give to entrepreneurs, Mike, who, you know, they're discouraged, they're down. A, should they get away from those negative business people who are telling them how awful the economy is? And B, should they go, what would be your advice? Well, you know, I started my company, Blue Base Marketing, in the worst economy in the history of the world. <laughs> and people don't people don't believe that, but I started the co- company in 2009 when the world was in complete yeah, disarray. that's when I started my business. The financial markets were crazy. Yep. People were laid off, getting laid off all the place. Yep. Here's a couple of things that I do. I don't watch the news. You know why? Because the news is always negative. Yep. A, that's the first thing I do. But as an entrepreneur, you don't listen really to what any uh, to what anybody else tells you. If they tell you it's not going to work, you know, you go the other way. Well, one time I told a story about... I did an interview with a guy named Dean Graziosi, and he said to me, he goes, Mike, sometimes you need to think like a contrarian. I didn't even know what the word meant. I just nodded and acted, and acted, and acted like I knew what he meant. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Dean, what does that mean? He says, well, Mike, you know, he, buy, he buys real estate. He says, Mike, every time I buy real estate, people are always telling me, hey, Dean, you know, the market's going to crash. Or, you know, why don't you wait and all these other things. Successful entrepreneurs don't don't wait. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a successful yeah. drummer. His name is Richard Christie, and one of his biggest things is, and this is, this is the thing mm-hmm. with entrepreneurs, is, you know, he's trying to buy a basketball a washer and dryer and a fur coat all at the same time. But he kept every time they kept trying to close the deal, he kept saying yes, no, yes, no, because he couldn't make a decision. So what I say to people is you need to take the salad out of your mouth and actually take action. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are so afraid to take action. People who think they're an entrepreneur uh, and that that don't take action, they're not entrepreneurs. They're just employees. Yeah. So if, you know, if you're if you really yeah. want to be an entrepreneur, and, you need to take the salad out of your mouth and actually and actually do things. Right and. And having said that, Mike, you you know, there will be failure. I mean, you will try some things with the best intention, and they may not work. Well, that's exactly it. You know, I say to people, you know, I fail every single day. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's just life as an entrepreneur. You have to understand yeah. that. You know, every, t- every time you wake up in the morning, you're going to have to, you know, Zig Ziglar, you've probably heard of him, right? Sure. I, I, I had a, uh, an opportunity to meet him. I've gone to dinner with him, and I know his family. And, you know, he talks about temporary defeats. You know, I don't necessarily believe in failure. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, if you looked at my life, I declared bankruptcy. Okay, I've been, you know, I've been arrested a couple times. I, 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 uh, I, I missed a bar exam by two questions. Mm. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of different things that a lot of people would call a failure, right? But I looked at it like this. I didn't fail the bar exam. I just didn't pass the bar yeah. exam. I went in the second time, and I I crushed it, and I, you know, and I'm a lawyer, you know, as, you know, as a result. But I tell you though, I was talking to somebody too about, you know, when you <clears throat> when you actually draw the. When you I try and connect the dots, so to speak, in your mm-hmm. life, right? If I had actually passed the bar exam at that time, I probably wouldn't be talking to you today about exactly. my book, Ask More, Get More, yeah. because I probably would have went down yeah. a different path yeah. uh, in my and, life. And, and, uh, I know, as yeah, an let me comment so on that. For a reason. Let me comment on I think that's very important. I look at that, too, in my life. Well, if I had stayed there or done this, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today. I think that's important. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I know that you are an infomercial expert, yeah. So we want to know, we want to know what goes into selling a successful product. Well, you know, uh, there are a lot of different things, uh, but one of the things for what I do, so I don't do, I, I'm not in the traditional infomercial business, meaning you don't see, you know, bells and whistles, you don't see celebrities, you're not, they don't see people, you know, driving fancy cars and things like that. What I do is, is I interview people, you know, uh, with products and services that have a positive impact on their lives. And it's, and it's a very, uh, casual setting. It's just me and then the other person. But what makes my infomercial successful, and here's the secret, this is, people, people watch my interviews, it's an interview style infomercial, and they look like, oh, I can do that. I could sit on a table and interview somebody. And I say, well, go ahead and give it a shot. But here's the secret. I'll give everybody the secret is the people that I talk to and the products that I promote, they don't, 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 they don't, always, they don't necessarily, um, they, don't, <clears throat> they always have a positive impact. But here's the thing is the people that promote them, they're not hired guns. They're not celebrities. Uh, they're not actors. They're people that have lived it. They've breathed it. Mm-hmm. They cried it. They stayed up all, all night over it. And because those people, when I ask them a question, you know, about their product, they don't need to think about it because they know the answers. And the consumers in the United States, they can tell whether or not it's real. Mm-hmm. You know, you see, I mean, infomercials, 
uh, you know, the kind of it's like a four letter word sometimes in advertising. But uh, you know, you, some of the biggest companies in the in the history uh, uh, within within the at least last twenty years uh, are using infomercials as a great way to market you know different products. So the secret for what I do is, is I promote products that have a positive impact and also people that actually really mm-hmm. truly believe in them. Yeah, and that's actually what I do. I do it in long form radio. They're very, oh. very similar. That's what I do. And, and give people half an hour, an hour, because I think it's so important. And I think what also is very important is when you have testimony, when, you know, people who've used these services or products can say, yes, I have, and it's changed my life. I'm sure you do that, too. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. You know, again, if you have a product that really does have a positive impact on, on people's lives, and that's great. You, you see these infomercials all the time, and they jump the shark, meaning they've been, they've been on TV for years and years, and they're, you know, they're, uh, you know, gadgets that, you know, might do your hair a little bit differently or, or straighten your hair or whatever. That is, to me, I don't get excited about that. I get excited about, you know, being able to sell products that really, truly, you know, do have, you know, testimonials. People say that changed my life. You know, or I couldn't, I couldn't walk or I had arthritis or whatever, and, and now I take this product and now I can go to the beach and, and, and play with my grandson or, or do these other things. And even like my book itself, you know, I have an infomercial for my book and, and people, you know, call, I get the testimonials I get from people are fantastic. And that makes, you know, that that allows me to get up in the morning and be exactly. happy. Exactly. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are talking more to Michael Alden. His book is Ask More, Get More, How to Earn More, Save More, and Live More Just by Asking. And this is a great, pragmatic, and simple self-help guide written by a true rags-to-riches Every man for everyone, every person looking to improve their life. My guest on the phone is Michael Alden. He's a business and lifestyle expert and author of the best-selling book, Ask More, Get More. He had a very traumatic childhood and worked through tremendous obstacles and is extremely successful. He has Blue Vase Marketing, which is an infomercial consulting firm with clients around the world. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, let's talk a little more about marketing. But before we do, I have to tell you my pet peeve when you were talking about motivation. When people say to me, I don't have time, I I just think uh, that is not the right excuse. Use something else because you know what? Don't you always have time for things you want to do? Well, yeah. I mean, again, I, I call it, you know, excuse tosis. And, you know, there's there's always enough time in, to, in, in the day to get done whatever you need to do. I, I say to people, don't confuse activity with accomplishment. So many people say, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Yeah. I got all these things going on, right? Well, you know, if you actually sit down, I love the people that always say, oh, well, I work 70 hours a week. I said, really? Let's sit down and actually look at the clock and say, so that means you're, you know, you're at your desk at 7 a.m. and you don't leave till 9 p.m. every <laughs> single day. That's not, that's not a reality. So yeah. there's plenty of time for anybody throughout the day. I just, I was, like, I was just telling you earlier. I just did Fox News, and they asked me to talk about stay-at-home dads and, and how to, and, and how they cope with things. Look at the, the mothers in this country. They're the, they're really the busiest ones, especially the, the single working moms like my mother. Are you kidding me? This, 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 this talk about not having time, but they get it done. They go to work. They pick up the kids. They, you know, they're going shopping. They're buying clothes, and you know, they're also having a personal life. So there's plenty of time throughout the day to get done whatever you need to get done. You just need to focus. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's a real key part. So let's go into that part in terms of what are the steps necessary to be successful and well, well compensated a job or be successful as an entrepreneur. And I think there are different skills involved if you're an entrepreneur. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think so. I think an entrepreneur, you know, like myself, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur, but they don't understand, you know, that there's a lot of risk involved in being an entrepreneur. A lot of people can't take that, uh, that stress and anxiety. You know, I was telling somebody recently who was starting a business, and I said, look, the next five years of your life is going to be very, very difficult. You know, are you going to wake up every morning and you're going to wonder how, you know, how are you going to cover payroll and, you know, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to pay your vendors and, you know, how are you going to, you know, keep the doors open? And that's what, you know, an entrepreneur needs to understand understand that it's not going to be easy because if it was easy everybody, everybody would, would want it everyone everyone right. would do it so an entrepreneur has to have some sort of risk tolerance you know um, i'm not talking about an investor i'm not talking about yeah. you know a highly compensated employee yeah. i'm talking about someone who's really going to put it all on the line like i've done before uh and uh and, and then take that risk to 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 start the business that you want to start yeah yeah and it's not for everybody as you said how can you how can people um, be successful at their job, you know, if they're around naysayers or if they're around you know, an environment that's not as motivating as it could be? Well, you know, 
success is a relative term, right? You know, so when you when you, when when you think when you ask them that question, success, the first thing that comes to mind is how, you know, how do you you know how do you either make more money right mm-hmm. at your job, uh, or uh, how do you uh, climb the, the the corporate ladder, you know, mm-hmm. so to speak, and you know. I started my career literally at the bottom, right? So what I like to say to people is spend, uh, you want to spend less time at the top, right? In the, in the very, because sometimes people come into a company, right? Let's say you come in your mid, mid, mid level manager or, or maybe even come in as like a VP. I like to tell people, you know, Look at what's going on in the bowels of the company. Look at you know what's going on in shipping and receiving, uh, in accounting, and spend some time down there. You know, spend less time on the top, so that way you can really truly understand what's going on in the business. And the reason why I say that is because once you understand actually the true fundamentals of whatever business it is, now you can actually build your net worth by mm-hmm. by then you know helping out in these in these specific departments. A lot of people too they get um, pigeonholed or they um, they feel as though they that their uh, that their job uh, title is the only thing that they should do, and I say to people, no, that's not that's not the right way to think. You need to take on as much opportunity uh, as you can and as much responsibility as you can. And there's a difference between an opportunity and responsibility. But if you have a an opportunity that's given to you. And by the way, and it turns into a responsibility. Well, then take it because, and then ultimately, your net worth is going to uh, is going to increase. Uh, and then you know you're going to climb the, the the corporate ladder, and you are ultimately going to have more money in your bank account at the end of the day. All right. And your book has so many terrific tips. We have about a minute or two left. So, pick a tip from your book that you think is really. If people get one or two things, well, give them a couple tips. Well, again, I think I think the biggest thing uh, for me that people always ask me that they ask me that question, you know, what you know, what, what really tr- truly is going to make uh, people successful in anything? From uh, you want to be the multimillionaire, or you just want to be that guy that has the nice house with the picket fence and the right. dog and the cat, you right. know, that's what, you need to take action. That's it. You actually need to do what you say you're going to do. It's real simple. You know, go ahead uh, and do it. You know, and don't you know, don't wait and you know, uh, don't you know, mumble your words. Just go ahead and actually do what you say you're going to do. And then you know, a lot of people too, they they're poisoned right by by society. You need to let the poison out of your system and then actually take action and do what you say you're going to do. And by the way. Don't be afraid to, like, you know, screw it up or blah, 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 or something like that, because that happens all the time. Like, you, you and I talked about earlier, don't be afraid to do that. But you have to take action, because you're never going to know what's going to happen if you don't take the action. Yeah, absolutely. This has been delightful. Uh, tell people how they can get your book, Michael, Ask More, Get More. Well, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm on your show today because actually, right now, my book is available uh, on Amazon. It's on uh, it's on iTunes. It's on Barnes and Noble for only 99 cents. You can get it for wow. only 99 cents uh, just for uh, for this week only. Uh, it's a special that we're running. So, but it's also available in hard copy and all the uh, you know in Barnes and Noble. It's in Hudson News. It's in you know Books a Million. It's all over the country. So you can go to michael-alden.com to actually pick up the book. Uh, but I urge people if they you know if they really want to change their lives, go ahead and spend you know 99 cents. Uh, uh, and uh, and I think it's I think you're really really going to like it. All right, and Michael Dash Alden dot com. That's it. All right. Thanks so much for being on the program. Thank and, you. And you're right around the corner. You're in Boston, so folks. I, I know. Mean, we, like local. we talked about, we're going to have to get together. Absolutely. We'll have to bring you right. here to give talks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye for now. All right. Thanks so much. Okay, Mike.